Hi, it is so good to have you here for worship today. My name is Mike. I'm the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills, and I am so glad that you are able to join us for worship today. We cannot worship physically together in one place, but we are going to worship together as one community united in what Jesus has done. So we're going to explore some fascinating scripture. We're going to have some great music, and I am so glad that you were able to be with us today. Let's open worship this morning in prayer. Lord, we thank you for gathering us wherever we are. We thank you for giving us your word, your wisdom, and most of all, we thank you for bringing us to salvation through what you've done. We pray that you would fill us with your spirit this day, and you might be glorified. Amen.
All right. As we continue in worship, there's a couple things I want to let you know about. First of all, if you are new to our channel and new to our fellowship, I am so happy you are here and joining us today for worship. It is a blessing to have you with, and we hope you are blessed to be here. Down in the description below, there is a digital, com excuse me, a digital connection card in there. Uh, if you want to let us know who you are, just fill out as much information as you feel comfortable with, and we will make sure we keep you up to date on that. Also want to let you know a couple very important announcements. First of all, one of the things that we have gotten is people of this congregation want to pray. That's great. We love that. We want to be a people of prayer. And if you want to get prayer updates, put in the digital contact card. Just say that you put your name and your email and tell us that you want to get prayer updates and we will make sure you get those prayer email updates. We are sending those out on a regular basis now, and anything that you need prayer for, if you want prayer for something, put it in the contact card. If you want to get those updates, put it in the contact card, and we will make sure we get people praying for you. It's part of who we are as a people. Also want to let you know, next week, May 31st, well, depends on when you're watching this, May 31st, Pentecost. We're so excited. We are going to do drive-in worship. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, but the big things that you want to know is we're doing one service, 9.30 a.m. next week. You want to be here by 9.30. We're going to start promptly at 9.30. You'll be able to listen on your car stereo. We're going to broadcast on the FM band on our own pirate radio station. There's no truth to the rumor that I just like saying pirate radio. Maybe there's truth to that. But it is a chance for us to worship together as a community. We can see each other. We can worship as a people and still keep everybody safe. It is a wonderful experience. I am so looking forward to it next week. Now, I know some of you cannot be here. I know some of you, even in the car format, are still worried about health. If you can be here, God bless you. If you can't be here, God bless you too. We are going to keep doing the live stream. We are going to keep doing videos so that you can be part of our community, even if you cannot be here physically. That is a commitment. We're going to do that for the foreseeable future. For a lot of reasons I'm not going to get into today, but it is going to be a vital part of our ministry going forward. And again, Pentecost, one service, 9.30 a.m. Now, this is very important. We'd like to start the worship right at 9.30 but the building is going to be closed, so you cannot come in and use the bathrooms, you can't use the playgrounds or anything else, because we're trying to keep all the social distancing rules in effect. And it's very hard if we've got people coming in and out. We've got some staff people here that are running the equipment, but those are the only people who are going to be in the building. Other than that, we need you to stay in your cars for everybody's safety. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all that, but I want you to know that. So, last thing I did want to say, on Pentecost is that we still can, you can still order the geraniums through Monday, the 24th. Just again, email or call the church office. We'll get you hooked up. It's a wonderful tradition. Red flowers, we'll have them out there uh, for worship. It's going to be great. Last thing I did want to say, we have not been able to meet physically, but the ministry of this congregation has been going on proudly for the last eight weeks or however long we've been in the safer at home mode. We have been educating the children, we have been preaching the word, we have been serving the needy, we have been feeding the hungry, we've been doing all those things. And part of that, if you haven't been able to do those things, you can still give and be part of that. It is a way of supporting the mission of the congregation both here in Washington County and across the world. The details for how to give are in the description below, and you'll see a slide here and at the end of the video. So with that, Thank you and bless you for your support. Hi, my name is Alyssa Lear and I regularly attend 8.30 a.m. worship. The first reading is from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 10. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters 
one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. This is God's word. Thank you. This morning's reading could really be summed up pretty simply. Peter is confused, but then aren't we all? You see, Peter kind of functions as an audience stand-in for us. He is always there with Jesus. He hears all the stories Jesus tells. He sees all the miracles. He watches all the stuff Jesus does. And sometimes when Jesus asks him a question, he gets it right. And he gets everything nailed down perfectly. And other times, he gets it dead wrong, totally off base, does not understand what's going on. And this is one of those times. You see, what happens is, this is the story of the transfiguration. Jesus takes the disciples closest to him, and he goes up the mountain. And while he's up there, the glory of God descends on him. He becomes transfigured, hence the name of the story. He starts to glow. He's just brighter than lightning. And as he's there, Moses and Elijah appear. And they're talking, the three of them. And if you were an Israelite, if you knew the scriptures, Moses and Elijah were the heart. They were the personification of what we call the Old Testament. Moses was the greatest of the prophets, the lawgiver. And Elijah was the personification of all the prophetic tradition. And so for these two to appear there, it was everything. And Peter sees these two and he says to Jesus, Rabbi, let's build three shelters here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and we'll just camp out here. And there's this fascinating line in the Gospel of Mark. He said this because he was so frightened and he didn't know what else to say. It's a fascinating glimpse into Peter's mind. And just to throw something out for you, there's an old tradition that Mark was close with Peter and then he wrote his gospel based on, P on Peter's accounts. Collected all those wisdoms and bits that Peter passed down to him. And so you can hear Peter telling the story of them going up the mountain and then saying, and I said, let's build three shelters. He said, because I didn't know what else to say. I tell you that story. Because a lot of us are in that same situation today. We just don't know what else to say. We've gone from normal. I feel like I can't make say normal without doing quote hands these days. Or the new normal. We went from normal back at the beginning of March to safer at home where we've all been in a lockdown to whatever this is right now. And we don't know where we're going to be in a month. We could be better. We could be worse. Just where we're at. The thing is, is we are constantly in this transition phase. And the natural human reaction is to say, I don't know what we got, but I want to go back to it. It wasn't the best, but at least I knew what it was. And we get scared and we get freaked out and we want to just hang on to what we had. You know, it happens. And if we don't understand that, we don't understand that, nu that, that natural human reaction. 
Sometimes we don't understand what's going on with us, and sometimes we don't understand what's going on with the people around us. I remember I'd been working at a church, and there was somebody I got along well with and worked with for a number of years, and we were going through a a transition point and leadership change, and I remember this gal just chewing me out. And it wasn't until like a month later that I'm like, oh, I get it now. She's taking out all the stress and the uncertainty on me. I wish I had thought of that a month ago. It happens to all of us. I get it. I picked up fiction off of my bookshelf that I read 20 years ago because it's comfortable. It's something I know. I get it. We all want to go back to what we knew before, to those familiar patterns. And sometimes we just grab onto those things. But the reality is we're called the new places. And the world around us gives us new challenges and new people to meet. The challenges that we face as the church don't say don't stay stagnant. This next season, month, three months, six months, year, I don't know how it's going to play out. I don't know what it's going to look like. I am suspecting it'll be a while before we get back into the sanctuary as a body, simply because right now the county is saying 25% capacity, and then singing is kind of problematic in enclosed spaces. I really don't like taking that risk. So it would be tough for us to do that. But that being said, we're going to keep figuring out how worship together as a community. Next Sunday, Pentecost, we're doing drive-in worship in that parking lot right over there. You will be able to come and see the rest of this community. I'm so excited about that. I really am. I cannot tell you how excited I am to actually be able to look around and see you all as I'm preaching. I know you can see me. I want to be able to see you. It's going to be fun. It is a chance for us to gather and be reminded that we are not a collection of individuals, but we are knit together in one body. This next season, these next few months, as we restart physical gatherings, is going to be a chance to explore new things. Now, I know, and I know I love it as much as anybody else. I know I love those things that are familiar and those traditions. But the reality is, is some of those things we cannot do right now. And the challenge for us is to be faithful in that. Because God is using this crisis to reach new people. To see new ministries happen. I am excited about some of the things that people have been talking about. I am excited about some of the ways that we can do ministry. I'm excited about how God is using this time. Is it scary? Yeah. When the disciples were going to go to Jerusalem with Jesus, they were scared. They were terrified. Thomas up and says, yeah, sure, let's go. We're all going to die anyway. But Jesus says this beautiful thing in the Gospel of John. He says, look, the sheep know my voice. And I want us in this time to focus on the voice of Jesus. To know that when things are turbulent, when things are strange, when it feels like we just want to go back to the familiar, listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. Listen to the voice of the one who loves us and guides us and died for us. There are going to be many transitions 
There are going to be many scary moments in this upcoming season. But remember that no matter what else changes, Jesus always loves us. Jesus always has a new life for us. And even though we might, like Peter, be frightened out of our mind, there is hope in Jesus. And we take comfort and we take courage in that. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for what you've given us in the Gospel of Mark. And we pray that we would be faithful and we would draw close to you always. Amen. As a reminder of what our faith is and the fact that we do not practice our faith by ourselves, we're going to confess our faith together in the millennia-old words of the Apostles' Creed. Good morning. My name is Linda Doucette, and I usually attend the 1030 worship service. Let us celebrate our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One. Righteousness, he humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so
Good morning, everybody. I'm Crystal Berg. You will find Gemini at the early service at Shepherd of the Hills. And now let's pray for the world, the church, and all of God's people. Father God, we have so much to be grateful for. We bring thanksgiving for your protection and care in all circumstances during this time of isolation, separation. Thanks for the inspiration to find treatments for the virus and for those that are working on a vaccine. We thank you for the businesses and the people who so generously stepped up to supply our needs for our personal safety. We thank you for our president and his team, the governors and all officials who moved us forward through this trying time. We especially give you thanks for the opportunity to virtually worship and especially Pastor Mike and his team for keeping us connected and getting us ready to gather again. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up all who have served communities and those who have those who have been affected by the virus. Protect them and their families. Let us honor their efforts with careful attention to social distancing and other safety measures to continue to block this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, be with our students as they complete this year virtually, especially the seniors. We thank you for inspiring so many teachers and families and friends to create opportunities to make special memories for them and positive learning for everybody. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amazing Savior, hear our prayers for all who are struggling in so many different circumstances physical or emotional health, economic concerns, loneliness or separation, especially those on our prayer list or those in our hearts and minds right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord God, we are so grateful for our military and for all who serve or have served. We lift them and their families to you for special attention and care. And Father, on this Memorial Day weekend, May we remember and honor all who have sacrificed their lives, protected our freedoms. Let our behavior always be respectful and worthy of that sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. And now, Father, we pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And so, as we always say, our worship here does not end, but it does change form. As you go into this world, you worship with your relationships, with your words, with your work, with everything that you do. And we worship in this world until we come together and worship again as a people. And so as you go, take this blessing with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. His face shine upon you and is with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.